between Zora and Ashkelon. Amen. The Bible says in verse 25, the spirit of the Lord began to move him at times. Amen. That's what I just want to talk about just a little bit today is at times. Just at times. If you look at the life of Samson, if you want to sit, you can sit. If you want to stand, you're fine. I mean, if you look at the life of Samson, there's, there's a repetitive pattern about the life of Samson that I want to bring out for just a moment. The time that Samson was old enough, the Bible says, and as his hair began to grow out and he began to consecrate himself, as he began to grow, the Bible says the Lord began to bless him. The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord would move him at times in the camp of Dan. Samson was a judge. He judged the people of Israel for 20 years. But the Spirit of the Lord didn't always move upon Samson. The Bible says that it moved upon Samson at times. He didn't move and didn't operate in the 24-7 anointing of God because the Spirit didn't move him 24-7. He only moved him at times. At times when Israel needed deliverance, the Spirit of God would move upon him and would bring deliverance to the Israelites. He would clobber the Philistines because the Spirit of the Lord would move upon him at times. I want to look at Judges if you go to 14 verses 5 and 6. The Bible says that very early on in his life that Samson goes down with his father and mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. Behold, a young lion roared against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and rent him as he could have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand and told not his father nor his mother what he had done. As the lion was approaching them, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord moved upon him or came upon him. It was one of those at times moments in Samson's life that the Spirit of God would move upon him. But if I can take a moment and just translate that to where we are today, the Bible says the Spirit moved upon him at times. If you look at his life and where we are, we don't have problems and we don't have difficulties while we're at church. These are our at times moments. At times moments for us occur on Sundays when we gather together and worship is going on and praise is going on and, and the Spirit of God is moving and we have our at times moments where we feel like we're invincible. We feel like we can't be stopped and we can't be conquered. It's at these at times moments at church where you feel like you can hear the voice of God and you feel in tune with the voice of God. It's at these at times moments where you're not really testing, you're not really uh, you know, battling tribulations, you're not having all these things come against you because when you're after an at times moments, the Spirit of God is moving and there's no way the devil's going to come on you in these at times moments. But if you look at the life of Samson, the problem with Samson isn't what he was doing during his at times moments, but it's what he was doing between his at times moments. Because when you read through the book of Judges, as we just read in verse number, chapter 14, that the Spirit of the Lord moved upon him. Hey Amen. And he read this line apart. But it wasn't long after the Spirit of the Lord moved upon him that we find him getting with a, you know, with a Philistine woman. It wasn't long thereafter ripping this line apart as the Spirit of God moved upon him that he had inappropriate relations and he gave in to lust in his life. It was at this moment between ripping apart the lion and his next at times moment that Samson was vulnerable. It was in those in the in between times of the at times is when we find ourselves. It's in between Sunday and Tuesday. What are we doing on Monday when Monday morning rolls around? What are we doing when the anointing of God kind of leaves us and we're not in the church service and we're not in the anointing of God and the praise team here to pump us up. Amen. And the preaching, the preacher isn't next to you telling you what to do. What are you doing? And then when you wake up and go to work on Monday or you go to school on Monday, what are you doing in between the at times moments? We don't have a problem as Christians and apostolics during the at times moments, but where we have a problem is the in between the at times moments. And if we're not careful, sometimes we'll end up a lot like Samson and we'll come to church and we'll shout on Sunday will be used of God on Sunday and will pray for people on Sunday and will intercede on Sunday Amen. but then Tuesday morning when the presence of God has left us and the anointing of God isn't moving upon us then what are we doing? What are we doing in between the at times moments? Because at times the spirit of God would move upon Samson
Samson and he can rip apart the lion. But what about when the Spirit of God didn't move upon Samson? What about when the Spirit of God wasn't moving upon him? He gives in to lust. He gives in to temptation. He gives in to anger. If you don't believe me in Judges 14 and 19, amen, after he goes and, and finds honey in a lion, the Bible says that he presents a riddle to the Philistines. And when the Philistines couldn't decipher that, they go to his wife and say, you got to find out the answer to this thing. And so the Bible says she pressed him daily for seven days. And finally on that last day, Samson gave in to his wife and said, I'm going to tell you the answer to the riddle. And then there's honey that is found inside of a lion. And so the Bible says that, and then the, the, the wife goes to the Philistines and tells them what the answer to the riddle was. And the Bible says in Judges 14 and 19, now again he has an at times moment that the, the spirit of the Lord comes upon him. And he goes down to Ashkelon and slew 30 men and took their spoil and gave them change of garments unto them which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled and he went to his father's house. Once again, him and the spirit of the Lord moved upon him and God helped him do what he needed to do. But it wasn't long thereafter that at times moment. Amen. That the Philistines tell all Israel. They sent 3,000 Israelites to go after Samson and to bind him and to bring him. Amen. And the Bible says that Samson willingly allows himself to be bound and he goes to the Philistines. But once he realizes, amen, that, that his wife has been taken and given to another man, the Bible says that Samson took foxes and he put fire in between their tails and let them
We have got to learn how to live between those at times moments. Because at times, I feel like I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. At times, I feel that way. But then there's times I don't feel that way. There are times I feel like nothing can separate me from the love of God. But you know, Brother Lawson, there are times I don't feel that way. There are times I feel like going to prayer meeting. There are times I don't feel like going to prayer meeting. There are times when I know coming into a service on Sunday that God is going to do something tremendous and we're going to have a shout out service and we're going to have prayer lines and people are going to be healed. There are times that I know that and there are times when I come into church, hey man, I'm just going to be honest and I know some of you feel the same way that when you come into church you just want to get it over with so you can go home and kind of do what you want to do and chill out and kind of go about it. At times we feel like living for God but at times we don't feel like living for God. At times we feel like being a witness, but at times we don't feel like being a witness. At times we feel like reaching out, but at times we don't feel like reaching out. We have got to learn how to operate and how to function under the anointing of God and how to do what is right when we are not under the at times moments, when the Spirit of God isn't moving and the Spirit of God isn't overflowing us and overshadowing us. We've got to learn how to live between those at times moments. Because when the Spirit's moving, there's no problems. When the Spirit's moving, everything is okay. He didn't have a lust problem when the Spirit was moving. But it was between his at times moments. And from Judges 15 to Judges 16, you'll find that after he had another at times moment where the Spirit of God moved upon him, the Bible says that Samson spies a woman. In 16 and verses 1 and 2 and 3, it talks about how he spies a woman. And he goes into her. This isn't even a lie. This is another one. That he spies in between his at times moments. He gives into his lust and goes into a woman that he wasn't supposed to have relations with. And then the Bible says that he meets up with a lady named Delilah. And we know about Delilah. We know what she does. The Bible says that he was in between those at times moments. He didn't feel the presence of God. He wasn't moving as he should have moved. He wasn't living as he should have lived. He found himself in the lap of Delilah. Delilah. Now you think Samson should be a smart man. Because it wasn't too long ago that, that his wife betrayed him by pressing him daily for seven days to get an answer to a riddle. This is how dumb Samson is. He, he, he got pressed by a woman, his wife, about the answer to a riddle. And when the Philistines hear that Delilah is with Samson, they go to Delilah and say, find out where his strength is. And what does the Bible say happens to Samson? That she presses him and she presses him and he makes excuse after excuse as to where his strength is and lie after lie. And about the fourth time, the Bible says that she pressed him daily. And the Bible says that he came in and described all of his heart just as he did not too long ago when the Philistines wanted an answer to the riddle. I mean, you think Samson would have been smart enough to recognize what was going on here. You think Samson and all the times that got moved upon him would have learned from his mistakes. But yet Samson doesn't learn from his mistake. History in his life began to repeat himself. He was used to functioning at times, but then at times giving into lust. He was used to functioning at times under the Spirit of God, but then women would come knocking and they would press him daily and he would give in every single time. And so we know that Delilah presses him and he tells her where the source of his strength is. Hey man, he says, if you cut my hair, I'll be like every other person. Hey man, and so she cuts his hair and she says, Samson, the Philistines are upon me. And the Philistines come in. The Bible says that he's trying to shake himself as he did before. But he wished not that the spirit of the Lord had departed from him. He got so used to living from at times to at times and doing what he wanted to in between that he didn't even recognize that an at times moment wasn't going to come again. If we are not careful, we can get to the point of playing with God so much that we even will withdraw his spirit from us and we will no longer have an at times moment as we give our strength away to the enemy, as we give our life away to the enemy, as we give our soul away to the enemy that's pressing us daily and then we try to call upon God and say, God, I need an at times moment right now. I need an at times moment to come so I can kill the enemy and we're not even going to realize that, the, that God has pulled his presence away from us because we're living from at times to at times because at times
times we're confident when the Spirit's moving. Because at times when the Spirit's moving on us, we're full of faith. We pray and we believe that everything's going to be all right. When the Spirit's moving on us, we're worshiping in spite of our problems. When the Spirit's moving on us, we don't let anything stop us. We can conquer the world. We are overcomers. When the Spirit's moving, we'll pray. But what do we do and what will we do when the Spirit isn't moving? Hey Amen. I hope that when Monday rolls around, hey Amen, that you wake up and you have an urgency to pray. Hey Amen. Even if you don't feel the Spirit moving you to pray, that we get up in the morning and say, God, I'm going to pray right now because I'm going to thank you for bringing me through another night. I want to thank you for giving me the breath of life one more day. God, I want you to guide my steps today. Order my steps today according to your word. Let me be a light and be a witness. Hey Amen. That when Monday keeps rolling through, hey Amen, and you run across somebody, the Spirit of God may not move on you to give an encouraging word, but I just feel like if we would just, just have it in our mind and say, I'm going to be an encourager to somebody today, even when I don't feel the Spirit moving me to, because that's an excuse that we use. We say, well, I didn't feel the Spirit move me. Hey Amen. We don't need to always feel the Spirit move us to do something good for somebody. We don't always need to feel the Spirit move us to be an encourager to somebody. We don't always need to have the Spirit move us to be a witness and to testify. If we need that, then we're in big trouble. We've got to realize there are things in the Word of God that whether we feel moved to do it or not, whether it's in that time's moment or not, we better be alive and we better be a witness. We better be a salt of the earth. We better be a city on a hill that cannot be here.
come to tell you here today, hey man, that even though you may not have felt the presence of God for a while, and even though you haven't had an at times moment for a while, I believe that God wants to give you an at times moment in this place today. I believe that God wants to send, amen, such an anointing of God through this place that it's going to shake us all and it's going to stir us all. I believe that God wants to send an at times moment for you to realize that you are more than a conqueror. Amen. God's going to give you one more chance to say, I'm going to live right. I'm going to do right. I'm going to be alive. I'm going to be the salt of the earth. God, I'm going to be a worshiper even when I don't feel like worshiping. I'm going to be a praiser even when the Spirit isn't moving on me to praise. God, I'm going to change my life. I'm not going to do it that way anymore. I'm not going to live just at the at times moment to the at times moment. But God, in between the at times moment, hey man, I'm going to praise you. In between the at times moment, hey man, I'm going to follow what Psalm says and let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. In between those at times moments, I'm going to pray. In between the at times moment, God, I'm still going to fast. In between the at times moment, I'm still going to encourage somebody. In between the at times moment, I'm not going to be any different than I was when the Spirit of God was moving. If you would stand with me, musicians can come. I just want to watch and listen just a moment. It's easy to do what God wants at times. At times, and our lives are built this way at times. There's hardly in our society today any form of consistency. There's hardly any form of dedication and faithfulness because at times you feel like being faithful, at times you don't. Amen. It's like almond joys and knives. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. At times I feel like a powerful apostle and feel like I could be like Peter and Paul, but at times I, I don't. At times I feel like at times I feel like Judas, but at times I feel like at times I feel like I can't carry the weight of At times I feel like I'm saying so I can carry the weight of the world. At times. But what if we could do for, do for God, not just in the at times moments. But what if 24-7, seven days a week, 365 days a week, that whether we feel the Spirit of God moving or not, we're going to be the same. We're going to be consistent. And by the same, I don't mean unchanged by God, I mean consistent. I mean faithful. Because there are times you can come to church, and if we're honest, there are times we don't feel the presence of God. There are times that we come into church and you don't feel like worshiping. You come in sick, you come in messed up, you don't feel like doing anything. At times, amen, you feel like I come in sick, we can rock this thing out. But at times you feel like I just get me through the service. But what if in those in-between points that we don't feel the presence of God during church, that we can still slip a hand up to God and say, God, I'm going to lift my hands in the sanctuary. Hey, man, I'm going to lift up my voice. I'm going to still clap my hands. I'm still going to shout with a voice of triumph. Hey, man, I'm still going to enter into your presence with singing and give thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. I'm still going to be thankful. I'm still going to bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. I'm still going to bless his name. I may mean, not feel like it at times, but even if I don't feel like it, I'm still going to do it. Amen. Because I know that's what God loves. I know that's what he's attracted to. I know that's what he's called me to be. So we can't be like Samson that just flows at times. And say that. We get deliverance one day, we go back the next day. Because the Spirit of God moves on us at times. We get prayed for, we get delivered, then we go back to the same lust problems, the same, the same behavioral problems, the same addictions, the same lifestyle. Amen. Because at times we feel like living right, at times we don't. At times we feel like acting right, at times we don't. At times we feel like lining up to the Word of God, but at times we don't. But it's at the at times where we don't, it's the in between times. And God really tells us how much we really love God. It's in the in-between times that tells us how committed we really are to God. Because whether or not I feel His presence again or not, does not matter to my praise or my worship or my giving or hopefully my example and, and what I do in my character. I pray that if I never feel His presence again, amen, that He has done enough for me. He has done enough for me in the in many times that I have felt His presence. He has done enough for me that whether or not I feel His presence again, it's not going to hinder my praise or my worship. Because all I've got to do is think back to some of those at times moments. All I've got to do is think back to those times that he brought me out. All I've got to do is think back, came into the time that I was stuck in the muck and the miry clay. But he reached out and he pulled me out. If I never feel his presence again, he's done enough for me. Amen. And I'm still going to worship. And I'm still going to praise. Even if I'm in 
between those end times moments. He has done enough for me. Amen. That I'm still going to worship with all of my heart, my mind, my soul, my body, and my strength. He's done enough for me. If I don't feel his presence in me, I hope I don't turn to lust. I hope I don't turn to unfaithfulness. I hope I don't turn to fornication. I hope I don't turn to adultery and lasciviousness and all the works of the flesh that Galatians 5 talks about. I hope to God I don't turn to those things if I don't feel the presence of God. He's done so much for me. I love him too much to fail him. I love him too much to break my back. And some of us right now are in between the end times moments. Some of you under the sound of my voice are in between the at times moments. Where you felt the presence of God maybe last week or the week before, but it's been a week or two. And you haven't felt the presence of God. And you feel yourself sliding backwards. And you feel yourself not being where you should be. I'm telling you today, you can activate it in your life. Let's say whether or not I feel your presence, God, I'm still going to worship. I'm still going to live right. I'm still going to pray. Whether I feel you or not, whether you heal me or not, God, I'm still going to worship you. I'm still going to live for you. I'm still going to dedicate my life to you. If you're in between the at times moments, don't fret. If you're in between the at times moments, don't think that God doesn't love you anymore. But God's trying to see what are you really made of. God's trying to see where your heart is really at. Because when God's moving, it's easy to love God. And it's easy to worship. And it's easy to live for God. But when you don't feel Him, are we still as passionate for God as we would be? Are we still living for God as when we do feel the spirit? Would you lift your hands in this place? I feel like someone today is about to have an at times moment. I feel today as someone that hasn't felt the presence of God in a little while. Hey man, is about to feel the presence of God. Someone who hasn't heard the voice of God in a while is about to hear the voice of God in your life. Someone who hasn't felt the goosebumps and the Holy Ghost flowing up and down your spine. I believe that right now God wants to pour out His Spirit upon you. He wants you to have an at times moment. And God wants to deliver you today. And God wants to heal you today. And God wants to set you free today. Come on, would you put your hands up? Is there anybody in this place that needs to feel the presence of God? Is there 